Hey guys, my name is Brett Sanuski and I've been playing Daily Fantasy semi-professionally while also attending Northeastern University. Uh, today I'm going to break down my DraftKings cash game lineup for the June 21st slate and show you how I built it using RotoQL. So first off, I'm going to go to Insights for Pitchers and just look at Opponent Strikeouts. And I know... Um, Jose Fernandez is going to be one of the most popular plays today, but the Braves really don't strike out that much against right-handed pitching. And only 7.5 strikeouts per game, while there's some other people, uh, like the Indians, are facing the Rays tonight. So Kluber has a pretty good matchup. The Rays strike out a lot for his right-handed pitching. They're doing a little bit better lately, but they've all actually led the league for the better part of the first half of the season. Uh, also, Sonny Gray is facing the Brewers in a great pitcher's ballpark at home. Brewers also strike out a lot against right-handed pitching. So I'm going to go over the players now and so by Vegas run projection and just see who Vegas thinks is going to give up the least amount of runs. So Jose Fernandez is projected to dominate the Braves tonight, only 2.79 runs. That's ridiculously low. But at 13.7K, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get any of the bats I want if I also play Jose Fernandez. He is going to be very highly owned, though. Just the Braves are obviously not a good team, and they're extremely high favorite. Kluber, on the other hand, is projected to give up one more run, but the strikeouts should be there. And on an efficiency site like DraftKings, where you value strikeouts, in performance a lot more than just the win like over on Fandle for example uh, I have no problem locking him in over Fernandez as paying up and then I'll spend all the way down tonight at Sonny Gray at for only 6600 I don't think he's an exceptional pitcher but he's definitely not 6600 bad in a pitcher's ballpark against a team that strikes out a lot against right-handed pitching so right away I know I'm going to take a little bit of a risk right now fading Fernandez but I feel like the salary I'm saving is gonna make more than make up for it so I'm gonna go back and see what optimal lineup baseball prospectus will give us after locking them in and right off the bat there's nobody I really want to X out necessarily uh, I don't know for sure that I want to play these exact players but they're all definitely solid options uh, nobody I necessarily want to lock in yet either. So I'm going to go back to insights and then I'll just start at outfield today. Uh, looking at some ex team expected runs and batting order. Just going to scroll down and see if anything pops off. Right away I noticed that there's three, all three Texas outfielders are on the front page here. They have a very high expected run total, almost six. And... Ian Desmond is a little bit expensive, but if you look down to uh, Sinju Chu and Nomar Mazzara, Mazzara is batting third, Chu is leading off with one of the highest run totals of the day, very hot against a bad uh, Reds bullpen, bad Reds starting pitcher. I think they're elite plays today, and 3200 and 3400 is just way too cheap. They should easily be above 4.5K. I'm going to lock them in right away. They have great Wobas against right-handed pitching. I, it just seems almost like a pricing error for DraftKings. So I'm going to go back and see if, once again, if there's anything that pops out after I lock those two guys in. They're extremely cheap and will definitely help me afford some of the higher price bats that I also like tonight. So once again, nothing popping out, but you can see my lineup starting to come together a little bit more. Uh... I will also like to make the batting order only top five just so I can get as many at-bats as possible out of my guys. Every at-bat is precious. The difference between three at-bats in a night and four is huge and could be the difference between you cashing and not cashing in a night. So I'm going to go back to players and then uh, I'm going to try to find a catcher I really like tonight. Sometimes I like to punt catcher fully just because it's often a pretty bad position, but tonight there seems like there's actually some good options. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fully pay up for somebody like Posey or anybody tonight, so I'm going to go less than 4K tonight. Um, just 
I know I'm not going to be able to afford too much. I paid up with Kluber, saved some money with Gray, but I feel like there's definitely going to be some good pitchers for cheap. Uh, Vought is playing a right-handed bat at home. Uh, only 3200 looks like a pretty good play, but I'm going to go back over to Vegas run projection and just make sure that I'm going to get somebody who's supposed to score a lot of runs, their team is. So I'm going to go 4.0. and sort from the top down and right away I'm getting some pretty decent options I see Navarro against the Reds uh, Clay Buchholz isn't a very good pitcher uh, Russell Martin against Patrick Corbin looks like a very interesting play uh, he is batting fifth though which is not too ideal but um, it's definitely better than Pena, Chirinos, and Navarro who are way farther down in the order but right away, Brian McCann is catching my eye. 3,800 at home versus bad righty in Chad Bettis. Pretty right-handed heavy bullpen as well. Um, short porch and right. I think McCann is a great play tonight. Only 3,800. Should probably be priced up a little bit higher than that. High team total. And he just looks like an easy play at catcher for me. So I'm going to go back now that I took care of uh, my catcher in two outfield positions. I should be able to get a general feel of what I can afford for my middle infielders and my second out or my third outfielder. So, um, once again, there's nothing that's really popping out except for Xander Bogarts. I can't. I know Chris Sale is a great pitcher, and I can't pay 5,300 for Chris Sale. I know he's a lefty, and the Red Sox are a very good team, but I can't pay that, especially in cash games. That's more of a tournament play. Uh, Carlos Correa at only 3800 like that's pretty much paying down and like saving me money right now which is and he's in a righty lefty matchup he should be hitting third uh, seems like a pretty good play so I'm gonna like him I'm not gonna lock him in but it seems like a very very good play right now uh, I'm gonna go back to insights though and try to find a middle infielder so Josh Donaldson is a lefty masher Obviously, almost a 470 Woba, uh, top three in the batting order, and Ty Corbin's not a very good pitcher. That looks like an extremely nice play, but I'm going to go over to projections and just uh, see what some of uh, baseball perspectives' top plays are tonight. And Donaldson is definitely up there. 5,600 is a steep price, but the Toronto Blue Jays are projected to score a lot of runs. He's Averaged almost 17 points per game his last five. Seems like a great play, and I have the money now after spending down at a few places that I can definitely afford to lock him in. I'm going to go back to my optimizer and see if they're giving me anything that I love again. I uh, can still afford Correa. Blackman looks like a very, very good play tonight. Once again, in that Yankees game with a high over-under. Uh, Goldschmidt is facing Estrada, who I don't love to pick on but he is probably due for some negative regression he has a very low batted that uh, is batting average on balls in play and which is pretty much just a luck statistic and he is getting extremely lucky right now but I'm not necessarily sure he's somebody I want to pick on yet so I'm going to go ahead and X out Paul Goldschmidt and I get Prince Fielder who's been kind of slumping but once again Texas is in a great spot I'm not sure I'm going to be able to play fielder and cash it's been a little bit too much of a slump so I'm going to go over to players and try to find a first baseman see if anything is going to stick out um gonna go to Vegas run totals I have a good amount of money to spend so I'm going to sort here and just try to find the best first baseman of the day so I'm going to go up to five run total and just see how many guys really pop out um Right away, Mitch Moreland's in a good spot, but he's going to bat way too low. Same with Ref Snyder. I can't afford those to have a... You can't afford to punt first base and just blow it all together because there's so many good plays. And then Fielder's also slumping too much. Uh, Chris Davis is a little bit too much boom or bust for me. He probably could hit a home run tonight, but it's not something I really want to ch uh, chase. 
So I'm down to like three or four options, but Edwin Encarnacion is kind of popping out. Got a positive correlation with Donaldson, so batting right next to each other in the order, both righties versus a pretty bad lefty. So I'm going to go back to the optimizer and see if I like anything that they're spitting out with the last few positions. And right away, I'm pretty confident that Correa now is going to be my shortstop. He's only 3800 It's still giving me like $3,400 to spend per player here. Um, between the last two outfield, the last outfield position and second base. And I'm going to go to second base and try to see if there's any value there tonight. See if I can oh, spend up a little bit in that last outfield position. Um, Altuve is facing a lefty, which is always extremely appetizing. But at 5400 that's a huge price to play, especially on DraftKings where home runs are a little bit overvalued, I feel like. So I don't think I'm going to be able to afford him. So I'm going to try to sort by salary, see if I can find anybody under 3 k that I like. Um, and hopefully I can find somebody in a decent run projection. So I'm going to go over four and see if anybody pops out. So right away, uh, down here at 2100, Ryan Schimpf is a decent prospect. He's killed the minor leagues. He's in a righty-lefty matchup. And he's only 2100 which is just an extreme punt. Like, it doesn't even matter if he doesn't do anything for me tonight. Just his value alone will let me get an elite outfielder to finish out my roster. I know he's batting sixth. That's not too bad. When you look at the other guys in this situation, eight and seventh, uh, Brandon Phillips looks decent, but it's a uh, righty-righty matchup. That's not something I'm too interested in. And then uh, Chris Coughlin is going up against uh, Wainwright, who's a pretty solid pitcher and not somebody I really want to pick on. And he's pretty volatile, so it's not something too interesting to me. But at 2100, I feel like Ryan Schimpf is just going to allow me to pick whatever outfielder I want to finish out my lineup. And I'm going to see what baseball perspectives is going to recommend I do for that last position. Uh, Recommending Giancarlo Stanton against Bud Norris seems like a pretty good play. I mean, it's, uh, it's a righty-righty matchup, which is not something I'm in love with, but it's uh, okay with me. I'm going to just see what happens if I do opposite side only, because I do prefer righty-lefty matchup. And I get George Springer projected for 9.6. Seems like a pretty conservative estimate he has a pretty high ceiling at 17.4 that would be second to only Edwin Encarnacion and Josh Donaldson for the rest of my lineup for the hitters and I get positive correlation between him and Correa again he's leading off in a, against a uh, lefty pitcher at home so it seems like a pretty easy play to just lock him in uh, and this is pretty much my lineup there's nothing that stands out as any weak spots except for maybe Ryan Schimpf, but in a righty-lefty matchup at, in a pretty high projected run total, it's not the end of the world. Even if he just gets me a zero, he allowed me to pay up for Springer and Edwin and Donaldson, who should be able to carry the team, and then also Corey Kluber, who I feel like is by far the best pitching option on the slate. Even with Jose Fernandez, I'm not completely sold on his upside. Against the Braves, he should have a very good game, but I don't know if the strikeouts will be there and on DraftKings. Once again, they're just so important. Uh, so this ended up being the lineup that I played tonight on DraftKings. I'm obviously filming this after the slate, and Kluber had a very good game. Uh, the rest of my team is kind of underperforming, but they're making me able to cash right now, which is all that I can ask for. And that's pretty much all.